Hey everyone, how you doing? This is Vicious, and today I'm coming at you with a review for a piece of software called Actual Multiple Monitors. As I'm sure the title alone can tell you, this is a piece of software that's made for people that use more than one monitor on their computer setup, be it at home or at work. I think this is becoming a lot more common these days. People are catching on to the fact that having a second monitor can help you out tremendously with your workflow. There are stats out there that show that having a second monitor on your computer setup can help increase your productivity by up to 50%. And that's a huge amount of extra productivity. And it's becoming more and more common, I think, because the cost of monitors is going down. And also laptops and desktops both are starting to come with stock configurations and video cards that support more than one monitor right out of the box. So with that said, I think a piece of software like this is going to start to appeal to a lot more people. Because while the productivity increase is real and Windows supports multiple monitors natively, the truth of the matter is that Windows is very limited in the amount of extra options and the improvement to workflow that the extra monitors can give you. But adding a second piece of software to help improve that, such as this one, can make the experience so much better. So for reviewing this, we're just gonna kind of run through it from the beginning to end. I'm gonna show you a lot of the key features, point out what they do and how they can help you. And then at the end of running through most of the features, I'll just kind of give you an overall review of the software and see if I recommend it or not. So let's get started. Okay, so here I already have the actual main menu for the program open. This is where you can change all of your options and there are tons of options in here. I'm just gonna start at the top and work my way down. The first thing here is taskbar. This is probably the most simple thing and yet one of the greatest things you can add to a multi-monitor setup is an additional taskbar. Without this software running right now, this left monitor would not have a taskbar, it would just be open space. And um, having a taskbar here means that I can open up things when I'm on this monitor without having to move all the way back over. But most importantly, it really works uh, with workflow. Whatever I have here on this monitor, when I minimize it, it goes to this taskbar. But should I have had that over here, when I minimize it, it goes over to this taskbar. So when you're working with multiple windows and multiple places, that just really improves your workflow so much. Also, worst case scenario, say you're playing a video game and it's full screen on one of your monitors, it actually covers up your taskbar entirely, then you won't even be able to access it to open up a new program. So this helps fix that problem. The next tab we have here is the monitor layout and settings. This is kind of like your display setup from within Windows, but it's a little bit more glorified. It gives you some options that are not normally there. You can change the refresh rate, the color quality, and even the orientation of the screen with this program. Sometimes you have to go into your actual video card properties to do this, but now you can do it a lot easier and a little bit more streamlined from within this program. The next thing we have here is background. This is a purely cosmetic thing, but let's face it, if you're spending a lot of time on your computer, you want it to look pretty sometimes, don't you? If you ever moved into a multi-monitor setup, you would notice that Windows is very, very limited in what it lets you do with your backgrounds. You get to choose an image and it either just repeats the same image across all your monitors, or it's gonna stretch it out and distort it without fitting it proper. But now you can take an image and make it fit properly like I have here. I have one big image that fits across all three of these screens, or you can actually choose to have individual pictures showing up on each monitor. Both of these options are not normally available and really nice to have. The screensaver options here are exactly the same pretty much, except you get to set the screensavers in the same way. Have it span across multiple monitors or have different screensavers for different monitors. Just a pro tip for you guys, don't use screensavers. <laughs> Save some energy on the environment by uh, having your monitor go to sleep after so long and that saves energy and the screensavers don't serve any purpose anymore. They're from the old days when CRTs would actually get burn-in problems from an image being stuck on the screen for too long. With today's LCD technology, they're not necessary anymore. So the only reason to have a screensaver is for cosmetic purposes, but why not help save some energy? Desktop profiles is the next thing we have on the list. This is basically anything you can set within this program as far as all of these massive options. If you have a different workflow layout, like you have your video editing layout, or then you have your Photoshop layout, or you have your chat layout, like you're doing instant messenger and stuff, you might have different settings that you like to use for different layouts. Or you might share the computer with someone who likes to have a different layout. Instead of having to come in here and change everything individually every single time, you can just save all of your settings to a profile and then recall that profile later on. So that's what this is gonna do for you. Mirroring is gonna let you mirror a monitor or a section of a monitor to a place that you choose. I think the best way to use this would be like a, if you're doing a presentation. If I had an LCD projector hooked up right now and I was displaying my center monitor to people at a meeting. I could have my secondary monitor hooked up over here and have some presentation and material. And I can move my mouse over here and have it mirror where my mouse is at. 
So that way I can kind of have the main material here in the center, but have some secondary material over here that normally wouldn't be able to get displayed. So it's kind of a neat way to maybe enhance your presentations. Windows settings, there's tons of stuff here. You get to have new options. Uh, Windows menu is when you right click, you get new options. Like you can move things directly to another monitor without having to snap it over there. You can do maximize and all these new features that are not normally there. That's enabled from this section here. Title buttons does the exact same thing, but it actually adds the buttons up here for you. Close, maximize, and minimize are the standard ones, and you can add any of these on optionally. Desktop dividers. This is a neat little thing. This can come in handy for a lot of people. Basically, you can divide your desktop into equal parts, as many parts as you would like, and each one of those parts will act as if it was its own desktop space when you have it active. I'll go ahead and activate this right now. And now if I take something, let's take Firefox here. You can see that I have the ability to drag it and it will act as if it was at its own little desktop space. I imagine if you're doing like E-Trade or something and you have a lot of different browser windows open, this lets you really nicely and easily fit everything together and maximize your desktop space without having to resize everything manually every single time. Chat windows for AOL or something would be great. And also, the biggest scenario I can think of, if you're using a Matrox triple head to go or some other uh, multi-monitor setup where you don't have individual desktop spaces like I do right now and everything is one giant virtual monitor, that means if I was to maximize this window, it would go across every single screen and make it impossible to read or work with. So using these desktop dividers, you can fix that problem. All right, moving on. The next thing we've got going on is the hotkey area. This program has tons and tons of things you can do. And to improve workflow, obviously the best thing to do is not go and manually turn them on and on every single time, but have hotkeys available to you to make these functions work. And this is where you can go and view all of your hotkeys and change the key combinations and disable them as well. So this is like your hotkey central. A couple of things are really neat. You saw, uh, if you did see it, I have a video where I was talking about this feature here, ignore deactivation. Really cool thing. If I have a game maximized on my center monitor, Normally, when you want to leave the game with your mouse cursor, you have to Alt-Tab out of the game, and that makes the game minimize, makes it unload from your RAM usually, and it can really slow things down. And, and then while it's minimized, you can't see what's going on in the game. But using this Ignore Deactivation, you can just move your mouse right off of the game, leave it up full screen, nothing has to unload and then reload, and you can see what's going on at the same time. That was a really cool feature, and that's the reason I found this program. So if you want to check out that video, it's in my YouTube channel. Moving over to mouses, we got a lot of new features here as well. Here's one of these really cool features I'll talk about. Make entire window area responsive to dragging and resizing. This is my second most favorite feature that I found so far. When you want to move a window, you always have to go up to the title bar and then you can drag it around from there. I've seen some programs made by uh, individual users that sometimes do not have a title bar or it's really hard to get to. I've even seen my windows go off the screen before where I can't reach the title bar, then it gets stuck in place. Well, using a hotkey combo here, which is Windows and Control, whenever I'm holding down Windows and Control, I can click anywhere on a window, does not matter where it is, and I can drag it and move it around, and I can resize it if necessary. If you have a ton of little windows open everywhere, instead of having to fiddle around, maybe one's on top of another, and let's open up a couple of Firefox here. Got one here, open up one more. So let's say this is on top of that one and I wanna move this one, how am I supposed to do that? With this hotkey combo, I can just do it. it. Makes everything really nice and easy. So you can see how that can improve your workflow quite, quite a bit. And the great thing is that when you're using this, you don't interact with the, uh, the contents of that window. So you don't have to worry about accidentally clicking on a button or messing up your text or something like that. We have a lot of general options here, like you can have the program load at startup, you can enable, resize, change, and do a lot of stuff to the buttons and the window options. You, here's the ability to change the way that the window snapping works. You can use the Windows 7 style or you can use the classic style. You can change up the user interface and the language as well as the font. And here we get more stuff about how it loads. You can turn it off and on. A lot of configuration, you can back up and restore everything as far as settings and licensing. There is a free version of the program available. You can use it to evaluate the program and there's 
Uh, no expiration date for the, like the limited version, but there is a full version available that you have to purchase for $29.99, I do believe it is, to unlock all the features and some of the more advanced features. And that's where I'll come into reviewing the software. I think based on all the features that I showed you today and all the others that I didn't show you because there's just too much to show you in one short video, that $30 is well worth it because when you come into thinking about the cost of having a second monitor, $30 isn't really that much more to compare. And being able to extract all of the efficiency and workflow benefits of having a piece of software like this makes that $30 purchase very much worth it. So I say, if you're interested in something like this, then check it out. And if you have any questions about the software, I'll be more than happy to answer those questions for you. Just let me know by asking the question here on YouTube. And if you guys found the video helpful, give it a thumbs up to say thanks. And if you want to see the, any more future reviews for hardware and software, then be sure to subscribe to the channel. This is Vicious, and I'll see you guys next time.